Welcome back to the channel. Another frosty Alberta April morning. I don't know, it's uh it's about minus 10 today. It was it was minus 20 a few days ago. It's just been ridiculous. But never let the cold weather stop us before. So we're gonna keep working away on this uh this old Peterbilt, trying to make the best use of uh of isolation and uh, keep moving this project forward get this truck finished up so we can uh, we can get going on on project snowman so what I'm planning to do today is to pick up where the last episode left off so kind of ran out of steam and ran out of time and daylight there last uh, last week so I'm gonna finish up all the little uh, trim screws and then the uh, uh, what do you call those the uh, little cupboards up in the top there we'll put those in and then we'll uh, we'll get going on the cab. I got uh, you know I love Amazon. They keep sending me wonderful stuff, so I don't have to go to any stores to get it. So I got some more Noiko insulation. We'll finish up the roof. I've got to finish up this uh, this door panel here, and then we'll put the ins uh, the interior in the uh, in the cab and put the sleeper boot on. And with the floor, you know the day cab company has been incredibly generous. So uh, if you saw in a previous episode, I had a a roll of carpet. And I was going to use it to cut out the little uh, the little T and put carpet in the sleeper. And then I was going to leave this uh, this floor that I put in. But they were so generous, they sent me another roll of uh, of that wonderful flooring, carpet flooring. So I think what I'm going to do, and it's heartbreaking because it worked so hard to put this in here. But I'm actually going to take all these panels out. And the nice thing is I can lay them out on the carpet. And I'll be able to cut out all the little spots and the holes for the shifters. And we're going to put carpet in the front and carpet in the back. And that should just about finish off the interior. I think that's going to look really sharp with the uh, the black carpet and the gray and the black. And then I've got new seats on order. I uh, incredibly generous family. Uh, it was my birthday recently, and my mother she wanted to buy one of the seats, and my wife bought the other. So we've got those on order. Uh, so they'll be coming in a future episode. And I think with some cleaning on the inside, and once all that's done, the interior is just about going to be finished. Uh, well, I'll obviously want to uh, clean up the wiring there. I'm going to mount the CV and uh, Yeah, so we'll just keep picking away at this and hopefully we can uh, we can get close to finishing up the interior in this episode Well, at least with this cold weather you guys are getting lots of cold starts She's probably not gonna like this too much some kind of crazy to be working in this temperature but I just I want to get this truck done and I don't want to waste a, a good isolation day so I guess what I need to do first is uh, I'll have to cut this last little cut out and uh, mount that on the door and then like I say figure out what what gets folded behind what and then I'll bring the trim piece pieces in and screw those in and hopefully we can uh, we can finish this up and one of the suggestions by the viewers and I really appreciate the feedback is uh, maybe take one of the original buttons out instead of drilling a new hole and then uh, and then just turn that into a screw and then put the cap over it so that's the uh, that's a good strategy so I'm gonna try and do that as opposed to drilling new holes but I didn't mind these ones here because that kind of looks like the diamond plus this uh, this edge only comes out about that far so these guys wouldn't have worked there so I did have to drill a new one. So I'll try and keep with the uh, with the theme and limit the amount of holes I've, I've got to drill. So what I did was I popped out a couple of the original buttons and just uh, just lift the little lids off of there, and then I can screw this into this fiberglass deal here, and that should hold up the center. Because the last thing I want is to have it sagging in the back in the middle. So I think that should work really well. I just drilled a pilot hole and then uh, I just run this, the button screw in. Yeah, and now that's holding up the, uh, the center nicely. And then I also put the, uh, the trim ring in. One guy suggested get some, uh, some, gray, some gray paint for the, uh, for the trim. That's not a bad idea. But for now, I think I'm just going to snap it in there with black. We can fancy it up later. 
So you definitely get smarter as you uh, <laughs> as you go and you learn. So this is the right way to do it. You just pop the uh, pop the caps off and then just push out the nails. See, look how easy that is. I'm getting to be an upholstery master. So just keep doing that with the rest of them. Now a lot of people are commenting that they uh, they enjoy that I just kind of keep working at this. I'm not a professional restorer. This is the first truck I've ever restored. And I just learn as I go and I'm doing it on a, a budget of both time and dollars. And that's why there's so many episodes on this truck. Of course anyone that could uh, that has a shop and restores these probably does them in you know a month. What takes me for a matter of months, it takes me a matter of years. But this is my hobby. It's keeping me busy and I sure enjoy it. And when I'm out here working on it, it takes my mind off of all the all the nonsense that's going on in the world. And being safe at the same time. So alright, do I want to take off ones that I don't? So yeah, these last two right here. Yeah, so that's why I always called this project little by little and there's a fellow that uh, in the Duke that reached out and he said his wife does graphics. So she's offered to do the uh, the little by little logo for the uh, the back of the window there. So I think that's awesome. Just so much generosity. And, and that uh, per the last video there where I was uh, mentioning when to give away my stickers, it's uh, it's been just a wonderful response by uh, people from all over the world. A lot from uh, Canada and the States, but as far away as Africa and New Zealand and Australia. It's just awesome and so many good stories of people with generosity and caring, especially in this time of need by so many. So I just, I'm, I'm so, uh, I'm so thrilled that that was, uh, that that worked out and I got to hear from so many people. So I've got, uh, I've got my first batch of stickers. My daughter helped me put the, uh, the envelopes all together. And so we got the first batch of stickers. I'll be heading over to the post office this week and sending those out. So thanks again. And if anyone else is interested in a uh, twin stick garage or a whole trucks matter or a, or a little by little bumper sticker, just send me that note, the 359 twin sticks and, and make sure you, you let me know what you donated in your local community, whether it be uh, time or money. And uh, I'm, I'm a little over, probably three quarters gone with the stickers, but there's still some left. So if anyone's interested, just uh, just send me a note. And even if you're not interested in a sticker, just send me a note and let me know. A lot of guys have uh, been sending me emails with pictures of their projects. And I just think it's great. I don't know if I can necessarily take credit for inspiring a whole bunch of people, but you know, for those that, uh, that did start watching my series and said, he just looks like a regular guy with, with a regular job and he's doing it, so why can't I? So for those people, you know, it's just, uh, that's awesome, awesome to hear. And uh, you know, the generosity, I guess uh, my wife always says, you know, pay it forward. And the generosity continues. So at the start of this video, you'll notice I kind of did like a, like a TV series with an intro. And there's, a, there's an awesome dude by the name of Daryl out in New Brunswick. He's got his own recording studio. So he reached out to me and he said, hey, I'd love to make a I'd love to make a song, an original song for Twin Sticks. So that's what you heard at the start of this video. So thanks again, Daryl. That was really kind and awesome of you. There. Getting good at this. Getting good at this. All right, so I probably need to have just a little strip here. Blah, 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 blah. And something like that. I promise we will be finished with this this interior eventually so you don't have to keep watching videos of me working on this but uh, it sounds like some of you are enjoying it so just keep picking away like I always say all right so can get creative here because again this just gets folded over and glued down and I'm sure there's people out there going oh I wouldn't do it that way but again, eh, just doing the best we can with what we got. Okay, so I'll get some more of that spray glue and, and glue those corners down and we'll be good to go. Well, I guess I still gotta cut that guy out as well. 
So slowly but surely I've been uh, putting the racks in and doing all the little screws. Oh, it's a lot of work. That's in there now, both sides. So we'll, uh, we'll finish up the door. I think the glue's dried on the door panel, so we'll get that done. And then we'll, uh, we'll just about be done on the sleeper. So this is a good example of a button that I popped off. Figure why not uh, why not try and recycle what I've got? So I grabbed the because uh, I need uh, something to support the roof uh, for the span of the ce uh, the ceiling panel. So I thought why not just try and salvage something from the uh, from the old lid here. So this might work. It's just a piece of aluminum, and I'll uh, I'll bend this down and then drill holes to mount it in the back, and then we'll uh, we'll figure out a way to mount it in the front. And uh, this should work. We'll see. So that's kind of what I was envisioning. So I could attach it. At, uh, I got the material that goes in behind. So I could screw that in. And uh, this would be just a perfect beam to attach the, uh, the upholstery to. And I can attach it to these tabs. But my worry is it might be hanging a little too low. I mean, ideally, this thing probably should have been up against the roof and then uh, huck bolted through it. But I just did not want to drill any more holes. So we'll, uh, we'll keep trying to see what we can do with this uh, redneck recycling. Well, I don't think that's going to work. That's too low. Hmm. Look at it further. I don't think there's enough room for, for any type of brace up there. So you know, I wonder if the span is not too, too bad. So if I screwed it all the way along the back, and all the way along the front, maybe you don't need a, a center support. Yeah. All right, if you don't succeed, try, try again. Homemade uh, roof support part two. So the roof's got a bit of a curvature to it. So I thought, what if I used wood? So I actually just took this from the, uh, the pallet to test out the theory, the, uh, <laughs> to the shipping from the day cab company. But that might work because then I could put uh, the buttons in the front because it wasn't quite enough to reach these little tabs and that way the screws could go in like I won't leave this either, either I'll fiberglass it or uh, shoot insulation in but that might give me the support I need because at the back it's touching and then it kind of tapers forward and then if you don't have anything to hold it up in the front it just sags down so something like this might work Anyway, just trying to figure this out with what I got in the garage. Okay, I think that's going to work nicely. So now we've got something for the, for the cardboard to bite into all the way along. Yeah, I think that'll hold it up just brilliantly. So I put a board in, went and got a, something a little wider. So a little more uh, material to screw the, uh, the buttons into. And so I mounted up there. I think it's going to be held in quite nicely and squeezed between uh, this frame and the roof. And then I've shot insulation uh, underneath on both sides. So it's solid. It's as solid as the roof is now. So I'm happy with that. It shouldn't move around, shouldn't rub against fiberglass, shouldn't squeak. And uh, again, a nice solid material to, uh, to put the uh, interior panel in. And then as I also realized, my doors were blue. So I had to, I had to mask that all off and paint the door frame and then this was a, a brown color that i didn't like or a tan color originally so i masked that off and then painted that as well so i'll put the insulation and the noiko on the door uh, put it in this back corner and then we'll start putting panels into the uh into the cab so everywhere you look you find more stuff that needs fixing so the bolts had uh had broken off from this uh this bracket that holds the door from opening too far so i've just scrounging the uh the toolbox for some stuff that'll work here and that'll hold it from uh from opening too far 
and smacking into the, uh, the air cleaner. So just through the years, those bolts broke off. Fun. So I figured why not continue in the spirit of sound deadening and getting the vibrations down is to put the uh, is to put the Noiko on the uh, on the door panel as well because that'll keep it from uh, from humming and vibrating as we get on the road. So yeah, that'll be good. We'll put this door back together and then we're almost ready to put a door panel on. So another uh, fun discovery is the more nice stuff I add on the truck, the more additional nice stuff I need to buy to match. So I was looking at the old and ugly. Well, they were actually blue. I just threw some paint on them temporarily, but uh, we couldn't leave that with the nice with the nice new panels that are going to be mounted on there. So I actually I was uh, playing around on the internet and I found that uh, four state trucks. I've ordered new stainless steel strips uh, that'll come in, and then we'll attach the handle to that and get rid of this ugly. So just painting them for now, but man, oh man, everywhere I look, I need more time and money. <laughs> Quite a project. Okay, let's finish this door up. Put the panel on. So I just drilled a hole for the uh, window crank. There. Same idea as before. I'll use the clamp to kind of hold it where I want it. Yeah, that's going to look really sharp. That's going to look good. Painted those doors black too. Yeah, so I'm guessing the uh, the top part, the top cap goes over. Ah, get in there. Something like that. Yeah, that's gonna look so much nicer with that stainless steel. Sharp. All right, let's put this ceiling panel in. Uh, let me think. Let's get the back. So, something like, like this. So you spend a few Saturdays working in these cabs, you don't realize how small they are. This okay. looking pretty sharp. Yeah. And those buttons will reach, so I can just drill these buttons all the way along and that'll hold it up nicely. Okay. So I'm going to take it out of the truck again because it's just going to be easier to get these little, uh, Pop these guys out and take the, the nails out in the back rather than doing it in the cab. That way I can just put the screws right into the wood and put the little buttons right on top. But everywhere I turn there's just there's something else to do. So what I was doing was uh, I had this up there and then I realized all these edges needed to be folded down. So again, you do get smarter as you go. So I'm trying not to cut too far. And then I'm still using glue, but I'm using a stapler with short staples. And I think again, this is the right way to do it. To hold it nice and tight. Stapler. Yeah. That's way better than what I was doing before. I'll be an upholstery expert by the time I get this project finished.
Oh, that worked out really well. Okay, so the ceiling panel's in, and you can see where I had to tuck underneath and then staple it. Well, it didn't matter here. To have those done, I had to have this edge. But this doesn't matter because the cap corners are gonna go in there, and they're taller, so that'll cover all that up. But, man, oh man, is this ever starting to look good? Just need some seats now. Working on the uh, the cab corners here, and there's lots of nice material right here that I can use uh, that I can probably drill out a few buttons. But on this side, there's only a tiny little strip, so I'll have to just tuck the screws close, kind of like what I did with this guy here. But I think it should still work. Maybe a couple screws along this, and then uh, a few of the buttons there. Oh, lots of work. Okay. Just about done these cab corners. And I'm starting to run out of screws. So I did, uh, I sent the note to the day cab company and asked if they give me another, another bag of uh, button screws. But we're getting close. getting into uh, finishing mode and before I do the carpet I decided to clean out the, uh, the sleeper and I'm gonna just paint this uh, obviously I'm gonna get a new mattress but this doesn't look nearly as nice as the interior does so I decided to um, I decided to paint this so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just roll some quick black down All right, I think that's going to be just about a wrap on episode 52. So as you can see, I got the, uh, the door panel put in on this side. Uh, we got the cab corners in, the roof's all done, the sleeper's done, got the painted. Still need to order a mattress. So yeah, um, on the next episode, when I get some more uh, button screws, I'll I'll tuck these all up in the up in there. And then I have ordered a Bluetooth radio uh, so I can listen to my Waylon Jennings as I'm going down the road. And I'm just going to do little six and a half inch uh, speakers. Uh, I'm going to mount them on the underside there. I ordered a five inch hole saw to be able to cut the hole on that side. We'll steal some more steel from the old hood and we'll cover this up. So I got something to mount the CV into. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll get going on the, uh, on putting that carpet floor in and then we can get the, uh, the sleeper boot put on as well. So just keep picking away at it little by little.